In this video, we will begin to explore important concepts regarding the growth of microbial populations. We will begin with a discussion of the steps of binary fission, define exponential growth and generation time, and finish with an examination of the phases of the growth curve. Bacteria mainly reproduce asexually through a process known as binary fission. A bacterial cell will undergo metabolism and grow to be about twice its normal size and then undergo the process of binary fission to produce two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the parent cell. In the first step of binary fission, the bacterial chromosome is duplicated via replication. The two copies of the bacterial chromosome are attached to different sites on the bacterial cell membrane. This is very different from mitotic division of eukaryotic cells, in which their chromosomes become attached to mitotic spindles that act to separate their chromosomes. The copies of the bacterial chromosome are separated as the bacterial cell continues to grow and elongate. Because the chromosomes are attached to different sites on the bacterial cell membrane, the chromosomes are pulled apart as the cells continue to grow. Following separation of the chromosomes, a new cell membrane and cell wall, known as a septum, begin to form along the midline of the cell. When the septum is completed, two daughter cells are formed. Cells may separate and exist as individual cells, or they may remain attached. If they continue to remain attached, they may undergo further rounds of binary fission. The plane in which the division takes place determines whether those cells that remain attached will form a chain or form a cluster of bacterial cells. Following binary fission, one bacterial cell will yield two. Those two bacterial cells may then undergo binary fission to yield four. Those four to yield eight. Thus the number of bacterial cells doubles with each round of binary fission. This type of reproduction is referred to as logarithmic or exponential growth. The number of cells arising from a single cell that reproduces via binary fission is calculated as 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of generations. Let's look at the organism in the figure that is demonstrating exponential growth to see how we can use this formula. The organism on the right in the image began with one cell and underwent binary fission six times. Thus the number of generations is six. So we can calculate one cell times two raised to the power of six equals a total of 64 cells. Let's practice again. Predict the number of bacterial cells following six generations if we start with five bacterial cells. The correct answer is shown on the screen. Your answer should have been 320 cells. The generation time, also known as the doubling time, is the amount of time required for one bacterial cell to grow and then divide. As long as the environmental conditions remain favorable and nutrients are available, bacterial cells can continue to double at a constant rate. The generation time allows a measurement of the growth rate of an organism. Generation times will vary among bacterial species. Generation times can be as short as 5 to 10 minutes or may require days. Most bacteria have relatively short generation times. Bacterial growth can be assessed using a bacterial growth curve. To do this, a sample of bacteria is introduced to a liquid media and the population is counted at intervals. The information is then represented in a graph that shows bacterial growth over time. There are four distinct phases that may be observed on a bacterial growth curve. Lag phase, log or exponential phase, stationary phase, and death or decline phase. The lag phase occurs when the bacterial cells are introduced to the fresh medium. Cells do not appear to be growing during this phase. However, the cells are still metabolically active. The length of the lag phase varies depending on the environmental conditions and between species. During the lag phase, the cells must adjust to their new environment. 
if the nutrients available are similar to their previous environment, the cells will adjust more quickly. However, if the cells are placed in a nutrient medium containing a different source of nutrition, it will take the cells longer to adjust. This is because they must first synthesize the necessary enzymes needed to catabolize the available nutrients. Lag phase can vary between species and may be less than an hour in length or may last up to several days. The log phase or exponential growth phase is the phase during which the bacteria reach their maximum rate of cell division. The log phase is of interest to microbiologists for a number of reasons. For the lab microbiologist, cells from the log phase are preferential for staining techniques. This is because the cell walls of bacteria in this phase are still intact. It would also be advantageous to remove samples for the purpose of subculturing from this phase. This is due to the increased likelihood of obtaining viable cells. Medically, this phase is of interest because microbes in the log phase are more vulnerable to the action of antimicrobial agents such as penicillin, which acts to disrupt cell wall formation in actively growing cells, or drugs such as tetracycline or erythromycin that interfere with cellular metabolism. During the stationary phase, the growth curve levels off because the number of new cells equals the number of dying cells. There are several factors that contribute to the decline of the growth rate at this point in the growth curve. The depletion of nutrients and oxygen in the medium is an important factor that contributes to the decline of the growth rate. There is also an accumulation of organic acids and other waste products from metabolic activities that interfere with microbial growth. As cells enter the stationary phase, they are essentially entering a survival mode that decreases their rate of growth. As we move into the next phase of the growth curve, the majority of the nutrients have been depleted and waste products have further accumulated. The number of dying cells begins to exceed the number of new cells. In some cases, all of the bacterial cells die. However, some bacterial species are capable of forming endospores. Endospores are dormant, resistant forms that may be revived when nutrients are available. 